Welcome friends to another video. Don't let this deceive you. I am actually not a nightborn walking around Stormwind. I'm actually a Void Elf. But as we're going into this video, you're right. We are going after and trying to obtain the Orb of Deception. Now what the Orb of Deception does is it turns you into the opposite faction, obviously. It does not mean that you can go into, like if I wanted to go into Orgrimmar like this, I would honestly probably get one shot. It, it doesn't work that way. It just gives you the cosmetic look of being part of the other faction. So Horde and Alliance coming together, pretending to be one another, that is what this thing is for. Now let's go ahead and cover the meat and potatoes of this. This is obviously a rare drop. It is a rare world drop. So the best way to go about doing this is to go and find treasure chests because that has the highest spawn chance of about 3% for it spawning in those locations. There's two more things that I'm going to strongly suggest in order to do this. I suggest that you come in on a rogue because apparently rogues have the ability to see where secret treasure chests are. I don't have a rogue that's high enough to be able to show you that, but apparently if you just click the hourglass on your mini map icon in the top right corner, you can say, show me treasure chests. So that's kind of neat. The next thing I'm going to suggest is two add-ons called Gather Mate 2 and Gather Mate 2 Data. So what this ends up doing is with these two add-ons, you can have it set to where it'll show you the spawn location for every single treasure chest or nodes of any kind that you want. What you would want to do is just go into your interface and go into add-ons and deselect everything except for treasure chests. That way your mini map and map in general does not get too busy. All right, let's talk about where you can farm these chests and what location. It's not all over the map, even though it claims that it's a world drop. It'll only spawn in treasure chests in certain locations. The first location we're going to go to is in Kalendor and it is Syphilis. If you want to end up changing it to the map to where before there was a giant sword sticking into that, that you just end up talking to the Keeper of Time up at the top right corner and she will end up turning it back and then you just fly around looking at the treasure chest to see if they're there. Then heading next door to Angoro Crater, you're going to fly around and look for the treasure chest here. Now, if you are a rogue and you have the ability to turn on to show you treasure chests, then it'll actually end up flying over these. And you'll see that for me, I just have just a little empty purple circle. But if you are a rogue, it'll actually fill in if a chest there. So it actually makes it a lot faster and a lot more time saving to end up doing this on a rogue. But again, I just don't have one at level. Just run around in these two locations, going over each little section where there's treasure chests and then we'll move on to the next section. Heading over to the Eastern Kingdom, you are going to end up having three different locations here that you can try your hand at looting the treasure chests. You are going to first be able to go to Burning Steps and look at those treasure chests. Then you can come down here to the Swamp of Sorrows, look for these treasure chests that are all over the place here. And then the next location we are going to is the Blasted Lands. The treasure chests here also have a chance of dropping the Orb of Deception. When you end up coming over here to the Blasted Lands, you want to come up to the top of the map and you want to talk to the Keeper of Time so they can turn it back to the before times, that way the chests have a chance to spawn. So the main takeaway from this is just to make sure that if you're going to end up trying to farm this either to obtain for yourself or to try to make money with, that you get these two add-ons and that you do it as a rogue. Makes it faster, makes it more efficient, bing bam boom, maybe you'll end up with a whole bunch of money by selling it on the auction house. Speaking of that, obviously I've already said it a couple of times, but let's scoot and boogie and head on over to the auction house to see how expensive this thing is. So full disclaimer, I bought mine from the auction house for 21,000 gold. And it looks like somebody from my main server, where all of my characters mainly are, ended up deciding to buy everything out and put it on the auction house for 55,329 gold. So this is kind of a bit of an inflated price. So I'm going to scoot over to another server that I'm on that is not connected to the, these two to see how much selling for there. 
And it looks like for over there, it's only selling for 24,292 gold. So it kind of depends what server you're on is going to determine how expensive this item is. To be honest though, when opening up Azeroth's toy box to figure out what's inside, the Orb of Deception kind of feels a little bit of a deception in its own way for the fact of it's more costly than it's worth the hype, maybe? I don't know, maybe you want to run around as a different character or a different faction character to be more specific for five minutes, but you know, I'm not sure if it was worth the cost, but that's not my decision, that's yours. So like I say in my other videos, it's your gold and it's your time. You do with it as you will. I'm just here to show you the fun toys you can find in World of Warcraft. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. And if you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I make videos like this every week. Well, I'm going to turn back into my Alliance character and I'm just going to scoot and boogie myself out of this video. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good one.